Hey, everybody, what's going on? Jeff Rinker, another episode of The Daily Ticket, this one for Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. How's everybody doing? Detroit still has a 4 and one football team. And if you look at the stats and if you read anything, I think the nation has taken notice. One of the greatest things about having a 4 and one football team is I'm a guy that loves to read on Monday everything about the football team. I like to hit social media. I like to hit the websites. I like to hit the message boards. I listen to sports radio. And over the course of my life, it's always been negative. It's always been fire somebody. Matt Patricia sucks. Jim Caldwell doesn't know how to use a watch. Marty Morningwig, the bar is high. Matt Millen got extended. He went 0-16. Rod Marinelli, my will is outstanding. Bobby Ross, womp, 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 abandoned ship. I've been inundated with nothing but garbage over the course of my life, your life too, probably, that it truly is nice. So yesterday I did the podcast, right? You watched it. It was actually on Sunday from Ford Field. So yesterday I wake up. I get my daughter ready for school. She brushes her teeth. She eats her breakfast. I get her to the bus stop. And what do I do as soon as I'm walking back from the bus stop? I check social media. And it's all good things. Good things that I'm going to share with you. Stats I had no idea about. Little nuggets that prove that this team is legit. I have a whole presentation for you to make you believe that the Detroit Lions are maybe even better than you already believe they are. And we'll get to it. I promise we're going to get to it. But after I looked at all these various nuggets and pieces and tweets and Facebook posts about how great the Lions are, I went back to the podcast that was posted on YouTube yesterday. Post on YouTube at 8 o'clock. Post everywhere else at 4.30 in the morning. And I'm a huge narcissist. I admit that. So I went back and I wanted to see how many views it had. The Lions won. I thought the thumbnail was amazing that I created. Again, huge narcissist right here. And I was reading comments as well. And there was one comment. There was one comment that truly resonated with me. I'm going to read you this comment. It's from Trisha Miller, 7768. Trisha says the following. Thanks for your commentary. So it starts off sweet. Trisha goes on. But can you people stop with the history of losing lessons before completing? Let me try this again. I screwed this up. Thanks for your commentator. Can you people stop with the history of losing lesson before complimenting the team's current success? Y'all sound like you have PTSD, Lions podcasters. Get over the past already. Damn. It gets exhausting trying to listen. And the first thought I had was, wow, Trisha's over the past. How old can Trisha be? Is she in her 20s, I wonder? I know it's impolite to ask ages of anybody, so I'm not going to ask. But I do wonder, because I think if you're in your 20s, maybe even in your 30s, five games of Lions football would get you, I guess, to forget about the past. But if you're like me, I'm an old guy, I'm 48 years old. Maybe if you're in your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, maybe you were alive in 1957 when they won their last title and playoff game. It probably takes a couple more games than five games to get you to forget the past. So I wonder how old Trisha is. I remember Wojo and I did on the show one time. It was over the summer. We were deemed by ourselves with the responsibility to figure out at what age are you allowed to bitch about the Lions? Because if you're in your 20s, yeah, you saw Matt Patricia suck. But you really haven't seen all that much horror or gore. A guy like myself has seen a ton. A guy like my father has seen much more. So if you're in your 20s, well, Joe and I thought it was kind of bad form to you to bitch about the Lions because older people that have watched the Lions and got hurt more by the Lions, they deserve to bitch. Comment section below if you want to hit on it, by the way. At what age should you be allowed to whine about the Lions? Have you seen enough garbage that you're allowed to whine about it, considering there's a lot of guys and women that have seen much, much more worse awfulness? So they should probably have the whining rights, if you will. 
But I figure Trisha is young, right? Man, I have no idea. If Trisha, you're watching, please let me know. Again, I'm not asking. If you want to tell me, it's impolite to ask somebody their age. But the part about PTSD, you all sound like you have PTSD, Lions podcasters. Get over the past already. Damn, it gets exhausting trying to listen, she says. Well, it's hard to get over the past, especially when the past has been that bad. But then I thought to myself, well, maybe Trisha has a point. Maybe people don't realize how good this team is. Maybe if I told people how good this team is, they could get over their PTSD. So I decided to use my medical degree, put it to use. I'm going to be your therapist. Okay, I'm totally lying. I don't have a medical degree. You think any med school is letting me in? Barely got through college. I'm lying again. I didn't even finish college. Nobody's letting me in their school. Besides the point. I'm still going to be your therapist. I've compiled a list of eight great things about this Lions football team. And yes, before you ask, I decided on using the number eight because it rhymes with great. Eight, great, great, eight. You get it? Okay. So I have eight great things about this Lions football team in hopes that when I give them to you at the end of this podcast, you too will be cured of your PTSD of Lions past awfulness. You want to get started? Let's get started. First, I'll show you this. Eight great things about the Lions by Jeff Rieger. Let's get going. Number one, Jared Goff is the best in the game. You read that right. You ever look at PFF? You should. PFF, pro football focus, is what everybody uses to grade out players. The media, the fans, it's become gospel. According to PFF, Jared Goff yesterday had the second best score for the Lions at 93.9. Best score for a quarterback, 93.9. But it gets better because according to PFF, through five weeks, which is the season, there is no better quarterback than Jared Goff. His cumulative score is 90.6. Not Patrick Mahomes, not Josh Allen, not Lamar Jackson, not nobody is better than Jared Goff. How many times have you known the debate? We want an elite quarterback. We used to argue if Matthew Stafford was elite. If not, what tier was he? Through five games, Jared Goff is the best in football, according to PFF. How about that? Ninth in yards, the offense is that Goff leads. They're fourth in yards per pass. Tied for third in touchdowns. They have nine of them. Five in QBR, six in rating overall. I mean, Jared Goff is commanding an offense that literally puts the fourth most points per game in football. And there's six in total yards. Jared Goff has been unbelievable. He's the unquestioned leader on this team. He's perfect for this offense. And then I have more for you. The knock on Jared Goff is he always can't throw the deep ball, right? Ah, oh, Jared Goff is a noodle arm, right? Can't throw the deep ball. Do you know that Jared Goff, also from PFF, <clears throat> has completed 23 completions, gaining 20 yards or more this season, which leads the NFL. So he's the best quarterback in the game, according to PFF, through five weeks. He's completed the most explosive passes in the game so far. 23 for 20 yards or more. Jared Goff is your guy. He's going to get paid. We all know this. I never thought I was going to pay him. I never thought he was going to be around this long. He's really done a nice job. What a comeback story. Sean McVay didn't want him. Detroit loves him. Jared Goff is elite. Pure and simple. Reason number one. My list of eight great things about the Detroit Lions. Number two, let's talk Hutch. Aiden Hutchinson is a beast. We talked to you yesterday how he's turning into a superstar. Yesterday, another sack, and he had that insane one-handed pick. Then you'll wake up this morning, and this is remarkable. Hutch had a 93.7 score. Highest graded defensive player this week. Better than Nick Bosa, Oren Burks, Max Crosby, Trey Hendrickson. Ali McNeil's on that list as well. 
Great for McDeal. He's playing great football. But it gets better for Aiden. Do you know that Aiden Hutchinson has the most pressures in the NFL? And it's not even close. Hutch has 35 pressures this season. Micah Parsons, he's amazing. He's second with just 29. Hutch has six more. Nick Bosa, Max Crosby, TJ Watt, Chase Young, they each have 27. Eight less than Hutch. Aiden is the best at his position right now, hands down. And it gets better. Check out this tweet from Colton Pouncey. Does a great job covering the Lions for the Athletic. Pouncey says Hutch is 35 pressures. Not only is the most in the NFL, but he's now on pace for 119 pressures this season. For context, Pouncey writes, Micah Parsons and Nick Bosa, they led the league in pressures last season with 90. Hutch is on pace for 119. I'm not a math wizard, but 119 minus 90, I believe, is 29. He's on pace for 29 more pressures. Hutch had 53 last season. He's on pace to double that. Like, holy cow. Remember the debates? Remember the arguments? He's too small. He's just Big Ten good. Aiden Hutchinson, a freaking superstar. And you know who called it? His former head coach. His former head coach, Jim Harbaugh. He called it. He said Hutch should be a first overall pick. Ended up going second. And yesterday he talked with Brad Galley from Channel 7, ABC said this about his former player. Take a listen. Yeah, it's, uh, he's just always, he's always like the meter's on 10 plus. You know, he, he tax everything he does. Uh, and a lot of, a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement um, with the Lions. They're playing great football, gritty, tough team. And uh, I know he's, he's affecting it in a positive manner. Yeah. It's- and let's not forget that Aiden Hutchinson has four picks. The first ever defensive lineman to have four picks through two seasons. Nobody's ever had more, and you still got 12 weeks left. How about that? He's unbelievable. Another reason that could help you get over your PTSD that the commenter said at the start of the podcast. What do you think? My list of eight great things about the Detroit Lions. Let's go to number three, shall we? A historically great run defense. This run defense is out of this world. Jennifer Hammond, who's on the Lions postgame show, she also works for Fox 2. We love the hammer. She had this great tweet. Let me read this to you. The Lions 342 rushing yards allowed through five games is the fewest rush yards allowed in that same span since 1939. 84 years! And this defense has stopped some pretty good running backs that were not alive 84 years ago. K-9, B. John Robinson, Aaron Jones, Pacheco, et cetera. Lions run defense is great. And if you actually look at it, the defense as a whole is third in the NFL. And what a difference a year makes, right? And they just got some bad news too. Emmanuel Mosley is out for the season. Came back, first game, made a season debut, tore his other ACL. Sucks for the guy. But the Lions are deep enough to make up for it. They also lost C.J. Gardner-Johnson for the year as well. But that Lions defense just continues to chug along an historically great run defense. Nobody runs the football on them. Nobody. And I would say that would help moving forward. It's reason number three. Let's go to reason number four. Jerry Jacobs has been unbelievable. I think it's time that we got to show Jerry Jacobs, the undrafted free agent. I love those stories. Some love. He had a rough couple first starts. Fans got on him. He quit social media for a bit. Now with all the injuries we talk about in the secondary, Jacob, Jerry Jacobs is holding it down. Like people are like, hey, go out and trade for Patrick Sertan from the Broncos. And maybe the Lions end up doing that. But Jerry Jacobs is good right now. He's been awesome. Leads the league in picks. He's got five. Seven other players also have five. Jacobs has picked up three balls in six quarters. He leads the Lions in picks, pass deflection, 
Solo tackles, he's got 27 of them. I think it's time that Lions fans respect him. And I won't forget about this. I want to play you this card. This is Jerry Jacobs from, I believe, the Atlanta game. He got off social media. Fans were really rough on him. They were going after him. Jerry's like, I don't have to deal with this. Now, he's back on. But take a listen to what Jerry Jacobs thought of the people that were criticizing him. They ain't watching football. They just talking. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, if they ain't give up a touchdown on a, a no pass play or I ain't give up a big old bum, they not watching football. They just seen a, a P.I. and a, oh, he's a bum. Like, no, nah, bro, it's football. Everything going to happen like that. So I don't look at it. I just laugh at them because they really not watching football, if you want to be honest. The real fans know, like, come on. So, yeah, shout out to them. They ain't watching football. So there you go. Jerry Jacobs says if you criticized him early on, maybe you weren't a real fan. Maybe you didn't know what you were watching. It doesn't really matter. He's been that good. And I feel great for the guy. Undrafted free agent, always a great story. But this is a guy that took a lot of crap. And now he's balling. Five picks. Tied for the most in all the NFL. Jerry Jacobs, a reason, a great eight reason that the Lions might be different. Let's go to reason number five. The last 15 games. The last 15 games, the Lions are freaking remarkable. They're 12 and three. We all remember what happened last year with the 10 game stretch where they went eight and two. This year, they start four and one. 12 and three in their last 15. So you might be wondering, well, where does that rank over the last 15 games for any team in the NFL? Ranks third, tied with the Eagles. That's an 80% win percentage. Okay. The Eagles and you, 12 and three over the last 15 regular season games. The Chiefs are 13 and two. They're second on that list. And the Niners are unbelievable. They just don't lose. They're 15 and 0. This isn't just five games. This is now 15 games. 15 games. Eight great things about your Detroit Lions. They've been dominant for the last 15 games. Let's go to number six, shall we? Number six, I like this, by the way. I like this staff from Hammer. Fox 2. Hammer is thinking on my same wavelength. This is the best Lions team through five games I've ever seen. We'll get to the stats that back that up. But I think if you look, at this team, you look at the conference they play in, you look at how good they've been through five games, you think to yourself, could this team do the unthinkable? Could they go to the Super Bowl? Could they get the one seed in the NFC? Could they get home field? Could they get the first round bye? Which, by the way, if they did, they'd be one game away from the NFC title game, and the playoffs would run through Ford Field. So Hammer came up with this tweet. She checked the remaining 12 weeks for each team that is good in the NFC comparable with the Lions. So that means San Francisco 5-0, the Eagles 5-0, the Lions are 4-1, and and I guess the Cowboys who just got destroyed by the Niners, they're 3-2. and Cowboys have the fourth toughest schedule moving forward. The Eagles, they're 5-0, they have the ninth toughest schedule. The Niners... 5-0, and have the 10th toughest schedule. And then you look at the 4-1 and Lions. The 31st toughest schedule, meaning their, cake, their schedule is cake moving forward. You can make the argument that their toughest four games are just around the corner. They go to Tampa Bay, they're 3-1. and They go to Baltimore. They come back from Monday Night Football against the Raiders. They get a bye. Then they go to Los Angeles. Go and look at Philly's schedule. They got a span of seven straight weeks where they're playing Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco, the Dallas Cowboys, the Seattle Seahawks. The Eagles, I don't think, are great. I think they're good. They're going to take on some damage with that schedule. The Niners, they're the class of the NFC. I don't think there's any question about that. But the Lions actually have a better defense than the Niners. Niners, of course, have the better offense. But for all the people that want to say, oh, the Lions can't hang with the Niners, maybe they're right. But look at the Niners and look at the Detroit Lions. 
They're very similar. Are they not? I was watching this online. Niners and Lions are kind of the same team. Both have very creative play callers. Both have efficient, accurate quarterbacks. Both have outstanding tight ends from Iowa. Both have top three picks, defensive linemen that have turned around their defense from the Big Ten. Both have top three offensive linemen. Like, I know people because your Lions fans automatically think that you can't compete with the Niners. Maybe you're right, but I would love to see it. And the Niners have a tougher schedule going forward than you do. I think you're very comparable with the Niners. Another reason that maybe you can let the PTSD go. Another factoid that helps you get over it. I got a couple more reasons for you. We're at seven. I mentioned this. Lions through five games, this team, best Lions team through five games ever. We talked about DVOA a little bit. That's an efficiency stat. Really helps gauge what a team's going to do in a season. They have like a 98% chance to make the playoffs, the Lions do. This comes from Aaron Schatz on Twitter. He put it together. This Lions team, through five games, their DVOA is 39%. So you might be wondering where that ranks against other Lions teams through five games. The second best Lions team through five games, according to DVOA, was the 2014 team. They went to the playoffs. They lost to the Cowboys. The flag was picked up. They were 14.8%. This Lions team is 39%. That team was 14.8%. What about the Lions team that started 5-0 in 2011? They were 14.2%. This Lions team, it's impossible to argue, at least for me, best team I've seen through five games. Every other great Lions team, and I use great sparingly, you always knew the issues. Even in 91, when they made the NFC title game, you knew they were going to lose to Washington. They did to start the season, and they did to end the season. 95, they won seven in a row, went to Philly, got their butts kicked. 97, went to the playoffs. Matt Russell doesn't fall on a fumble. 93, beat the Packers, win the division. Next game, play the Packers at home. Sterling Sharp wide open. Like, you always know they're going to lose. You always know they're not going to go very far. You know there's a problem with their team. This team, good on defense, good on offense. Top seven units for both, depending on whatever stat you're looking at. This Lions team is good. And the best Lions team we've ever seen through five games. The reason number seven. I put it together. The list. Eight great things about your Detroit Lions team. And then the eighth one is fun. Here's the eighth one. Remember this? L-O, 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 L-O. Do you remember when TJ Hawkinson was a Lion that he got traded away? He gets traded away to Minnesota. And TJ Hawkinson says something that was quite offensive. He said the following. Take a listen. Uh, win some games. And so, uh, you know, that's kind of the first time I've been able to say that. So I'm pretty pretty, pretty excited. I really am. So it's, uh, it's, it's cool to be here. Uh, win some games. So TJ Hawkinson gets traded to Minnesota. They win the division. TJ say, I want to win some games. I've never been able to say that. I took that as a shot towards Detroit. Maybe you didn't. TJ, in the last 16 games with the Vikings, is 8-8. Eight and eight. The Lions, in their last 16 games without TJ Hawkinson, 12-4. and four. Take that, TJ. This never works out for Detroit teams. Usually, you trade a guy away. He has great success elsewhere. And you're heartbroken that you gave him away to begin with. Justin Verlander, Isak Paredes, Nick Castellanos, ring a bell. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on and on. With TJ Hawkinson, it worked out. Now, it worked out for him, too, because he signed a massive contract. A contract that you never wanted to give him. Kudos to Brad Holmes. I just thought that was funny. TJ ripping on the Lions. Oh, I'm going to win some games now. And he's won four less games. He lost the playoff game, too. So there it is. My list of eight great things about the Detroit Lions. I know what you're thinking. What about Sam Laporta? 
I didn't have time to get to Sam Laporta because nine doesn't rhyme with great. So we'll hit on Laporta in a different podcast, but he's been outstanding for the Lions and setting some historical records himself. So we'll get to that. But getting back to Trisha's point, the original comment that made me do this podcast, she says you got to get over your PTSD. Stop being negative. Stop bringing up the past. Do these eight facts about the Lions help you do that? Or maybe you're just stuck in the past. Maybe you'll be stuck in the past for quite some time. Let me know. Comment section below. And by the way, rate and review the Daily Ticket. Let's get to the comments. If you ever watch the Daily Ticket, you know, I'll read a good comment. I'll read a bad comment. Finally, some good comments. Okay? This podcasting thing, you're always looking for reviews. I got a couple reviews I wanted to read. I finally got some. I think the Daily Ticket has taken over, people. Let me read this to you. I'm not prepared, though. So I'm pulling it up on my phone. I'm not used to getting good comments. But look at this. I got three big-time reviews on the podcast. This is on Apple. This one from Wolfpack Andrew. Love the show. Very entertaining and informative. Thank you, Andrew. How about that? This one from Mike McNutt. Love the content you put out. Rigor. Spelled my name wrong, but that's okay because I like the comment. It's R-I-G-E-R. He said R-I-G-O-R. And then one more from Boost Fan. The content Rigor puts out is good, but all of these reposts from other sites is annoying. We're working on that. We'll change that around just for you. So how about that? Three reviews. So rate, review, download the daily ticket. Wherever you get your podcast or watch it on YouTube, download it on YouTube as well. Let's go to the bad comment. I knew this would happen. When you talk about the Lions pummeling a bad team like Carolina, you know the naysayers are going to be out there. How about this one? Rigor, you realize you're talking about a team that was expected to beat the crap out of the other team. You beat the Panthers. What are you so excited about? Shut up. That's a fair point. But you cannot dispute that in years past, the Lions would lose a game like this. Let me take a swig of water if you don't mind. <clears throat> they would lose a game like this. You know they would. So for the Lions to go out, 10 days off, 10-point favorite, missing three key pieces, Brian Brand, Shaman Ross, St. Brown, Jameer Gibbs, and to truly business-like dominate the Carolina Panthers, I think this proves that they're not going to overlook any team. Carolina was desperate for a win, the only winless team in all of football. Lions smashed them. And it was different. Because let's not forget when they beat the Chiefs, 10 days later, they lost to Seattle. This time, they beat the Packers at Lambeau. 10 days later, they destroyed the Panthers. So. While I understand your point, sir, you're very mean to me. I disagree. I think this proves a lot. I also have one more bad comment. Yesterday's podcast was from Ford Field. I was walking around in the field. I thought it was pretty cool. I was wearing my Jordans. And somebody got upset with me. Jeff, you wore Jordans to cover a Lions game. How about some professionalism? Fair point. Here's what I would say. You got to be comfortable. I'm not wearing a suit to cover a football game. Like, who the hell does that? Not to mention people that do wear suits. They sometimes wear gym shoes, too. I also want to show off these Jordans. I waited 30 years to buy Jordans. Why? Because I thought I was turning my back against Detroit. Like, Michael Jordan? I'm a Piston fan. I can't buy the Jordans. So my wife and my kid bought me the Jordans, knowing I wanted the Jordans, but I refused to buy them for myself. And they're sweet. You would not believe how many compliments I get on these things. Here, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll show you them. If you're not on YouTube, bear with me. Here, let me just, there you go. I'm doing a bad job of this. Here, let me try this again. Come on. How cool are those? So, I don't think it's unprofessional at all. If you disagree... Let me know. Comment section below. All right. I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for rating and reviewing. Comment, please. Download, please. But 
the eight great things I told you about the Detroit Lions, does it help you get over your PTSD? As Trisha pointed out at the very start of this podcast, she's over the past. Are you? If you're not, what do you need to see? We'll catch you tomorrow on the Daily Ticket. By the way, special Daily Ticket on Thursday, start of the hockey season. We're going to have Ken Kale on, the voice of the Red Wings. I love Kenny. One of the greatest guys ever, great storyteller as well. So we'll get Kenny on. That will be Thursday's podcast. Until tomorrow on the Daily Ticket, thanks, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. 